So here we are back at Women Matters and today is the 29th of June and I'm Heidi from the Wisdom Factory and Women Matters is a regular, how do you say, series of, uh, <laughs> uh, of the Wisdom Factory where women meet from all over the world and talk about certain topics. So far we have talked about love and hate and resilience. That was one I mean, two, twice, twice times ago, two times ago. I don't know how you say that. And last time we talked about fear as an antagonist of uh, love. And today Gertraud has decided that we need to talk about love. And unfortunately we are only in four because there are more love experts around uh, in our group, <laughs> but they didn't show up. Anyway, I give over to you, Gertra. You want to moderate this conversation. So over to you. Yeah. Um, let's invite <laughs> playfulness into the room and joy. And um, as I'm going to to steward or to facilitate this, uh, we invite and welcome what's most important for us in the world right now. So, and in landing in this conversation, I will um, have three rounds. The first one is you say your name and where you're from, so people know it. And then we we look, um, yeah, we, that we have, we can say happy stories or what happy stories did we have? Or maybe in this realm, interesting challenges. So you mean that since last time we met? Or? Yes. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm recently mm -hmm. and who wants start to start starts i'll start i'm Anneli from johannesburg in south africa and um in the last two weeks um I've had the beautiful experience of finalizing a completion of a series with a beautiful friend that we co-hosted uh, of Feel Good Now. And our last one, we did 12 sessions, and our last one was all about celebrating life. And it was one of the only few online events that I have been in in many, many years where there was a feeling of oneness between all of us and with people from all different parts of the world. So I was, I'm still appreciating that experience and everybody who participated to the series and to be able to share that joy with you here as well. And I pass on to Gertrude. Thank you. Uh, my happy experience was actually after a series of bad mood days. I was like stuck in a bad mood, and but I always uh, joyfully stuck in it. And um, and then I on Saturday I meditated quite a bit, and then I stood up, went on the desk uh, on the computer, and wrote for I don't know eight hours straight, <laughs> my first draft of an online course. So it was like no way to do anything else and just do that. And in the evening I had everything with, with headlines and everything. I mean, it still has to be edited and so, but it, it was, and many really, really uh, heartwarming, heart opening experiences with different people. So, yeah, I hand on to Christina. What happy story do you have to tell or 
interesting challenge. Good morning. Um, and, and where are you from? Oh, sorry, I, I have to. <laughs> I'm Gerthard. I'm living north of Frankfurt in Germany. And to tell you, Christine, Gertraud is today leading the whole uh, session. Okay. 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 Sorry to hear that. Um, I am in uh, Southern California. And I'd say um, in the past few weeks, the happiest moment was uh, our daughter returned from college and she's graduated now and is gonna be our roommate. <laughs> That's not necessarily the happy part, but it's nice to have her back. Um, so she'll be uh, um, staying at home until she saves enough money to have her own place. Uh, and it's been nice to have another person and somebody else to talk with and chat with. Um, she's working, so she's not here all that much, but uh, when she is around, she's a very pleasant, uh, and sweet spirit. So that's been our happy moments, my happy moments in the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. And do I need to pass or has everybody spoken? Go ahead, Monia. Yeah, I'm Mona. <laughs> I'm Monia in Vienna. Luckily, we now have a cold, a colder spell because we had extreme heat for a couple of days. And um, I don't enjoy heat anymore as I did in younger days. I had interesting challenges <laughs> with regard to our topic, love, because uh, Corona sort of forces me to be in distance to someone who is very important to me and who is sort of afraid that I might get, I'm in the hazard group uh, and that I might get sick. So, yeah, this is a challenge. That's not really interesting anymore. It's really frustrating and, uh, yeah. The happy experiences I have with Armas, my family, uh, as I told some of you already, I have been married for 55 years, so that's platinum uh, marriage. And we are getting along still rather well. And I'm reading now, uh, as I, well, I didn't put it in the chat, but I shall. I'm reading David Schnach again. Um, passionate marriage, love, sex, and intimacy in emotionally committed relationships. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a satisfying experience. I wouldn't call it a happy experience, but very satisfying reading. And yeah, that's so far from me. Heidi, have you? I haven't spoken yet. No, you I'm haven't thinking. spoken yet, right? Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking the whole time, what was my happy experience in the last two weeks? I didn't have any unhappy experience and I had many, many little of these joyful moments, you know, when I see the landscape and say, oh, how beautiful the world is, you know, or, oh, my garden, when I go to my garden, my vegetable garden, and then first I say, oh, there are the weeds, uh, and then I go and get them out, and that's satisfying, and then I begin to talk with the plants, I say, thank you for the cucumbers, <laughs> and things like that, <laughs> and in, I observe that it makes me, I don't want, I don't even know if it's happy, but it makes me not even satisfied, but it's, it's a, a, a nice mood in which I get, you know, an inspired mood. And yeah, maybe that's happy. Maybe I don't know what happiness is, so. <laughs> you know that joke? It's all right if you talk to your plants. It's only a little um, strange yeah. when they talk back. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I also talk to my animals. They sometimes talk back, so. <laughs> Okay, so far to me. <laughs> anyway, it's joyful, you know, it's, it's maybe not happy, but it's joyful. You really pass on to, to the next round. It's 
what's my current mood and what is my desired mood? And you don't have to, so you can pass on if you don't want to, but I would like to know, and maybe it's the same. Um, the order is not, doesn't have to be in a specific way. I say I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, like it's tingling. It's not nervous, but a little bit. And um, uh, kind of thoughtful <laughs> and joyful and that I keep. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think I invite playfulness as well. Well, I would like to be playful, uh, but I think more often than not, I have a irritation that sits under the surface uh, a little bit and I have to be purposeful about uh, being playful, which sounds like a contradiction. Um, and it is a little bit to be purposeful about playfulness. But um, yeah, that would be my intention is to be able to be more playful and kind of let things, uh, roll a little bit more yeah mm -hmm. so what's your current mood and what is your desired mood my current mood is quite you know i'm quite uh, like this <laughs> and my desired mood is not different so i'm i'm My current mood is there's some, I feel so tingling in my back. Um, I've got a bit of a head cold, so I obviously want that gone. <laughs> but I've got also some curiosity to see what's going to unfold. So that's my desire. My current mood is curiosity about this process. Uh, I feel rather relaxed and uh, satisfied with what is. But on the other hand, I can uh, resonate with Christine. There is underneath, there is some frustration. And uh, yeah, I'm, I won't explode, but I bubble. <laughs> and my desired mood playfulness, playfulness would be nice, but Usually I have it, but right now, um, no, it's not really here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we invite it. And we go another round um, with <laughs> what is for today's talk, for today's call, what's my happiest dream? What could be the happiest outcome for myself, for the group? Maybe we can decide to be heart blown and mind blown if we want to <laughs> by that. So what's my happiest dream or outcome? So what comes to my mind is to understand better what love is hmm. and what uh, allows it to unfold and to I do think there are different forms of love and to realize which ones I have lived, which ones I can live and I want to live and uh, which is possible. Let's say this way. My, my dream is to really feel so connected that there's nothing that separate me from all of you and the rest of the world. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Um, your question made me realize I think I have maybe stopped dreaming about 
things. I, I am rather content uh, with my life, so I think I do not imagine, uh, I, I'm not aspiring to a whole lot at this point. I'm, I'm kind of in a steady state, but um, if I think about it a little bit more deeply, uh, I think um, my dream for more happiness would be to, uh, I'm gonna go back to playful, spend less time working. Um, I had kind of a realization this past week and talking with a friend that uh, I do, I, I'm a bit of a workaholic and I don't set really good boundaries around working and being productive. Um, so I think my dream would be to give myself the gift of uh, leisure time and just not feel like I have to do more, do more, do more. Well, uh, my happiest dream, first of all, I'm trying to again after many decades to um, enable lucid dreaming and I sort of I can't it's it's really frustrating because I could times ago I could that and now it's just all the signals are there and I just continue to, to dream on um, this would be one of my happiest dreams. <laughs> and of course, to be self-reliant mm -hmm. in intimacy and not dependent on the moods of others. And I really made up, this is really one of my firmest decisions now that I don't want to continue like I did. and. I don't want to be drawn down. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's difficult times. So, yeah. And okay. about today to this conversation, what would that be? Your happiest outcome? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no, nothing. Uh, it's all open. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we are open to be mind blown and heart blown. <laughs> and another one would be, if we have any assumptions, are we willing to give them as open questions. Okay, so um, being landed, um, I invite everything that we need into the room to fulfill on our happiest dream. <laughs> and if you think it's already there, Let's wonder, maybe we just have a little stillness and let what wants to bubble up in terms of what is love, what do we want to talk about love, that we, when we talk, we really let it bubble up. Let us be surprised by, by what comes out of our mouth. <laughs> So that we go into that space, not already, we know everything, but yeah, let us be surprised and wonder. And when you're ready, you just talk. <laughs> There's no specific time I set. I 
I'm thinking that love is sort of an art, unless you have learned it from childhood on. If you haven't learned it, then it's really something to go to. I want to say university, but it's not really university. Life is university. And if you want to live it, you have to, to learn it or discover it, let's say. And I think in my life, I did very many attempts to find it, but I was not really so, neither knew how to live it, nor um, being very gifted then to, or let's say often ashamed of, of, of this feeling as if it was not allowed. And only with age, then it, uh, it has become better. Or with experience, I don't know, so. that we don't get too serious. <laughs> Let's invite 100% play and 69% playfulness, uh, seriousness. Okay, so I say something playful. The best moments of love I have experienced, and that was with Mark, when we were very playful together. And that was really wonderful and not so earnest as before with all the other guys. <laughs> hmm. Well, to me, love has always been, no, that's not true. Uh, there are many facets of love and Karuna caring for others always was connected with love with me. But now that I'm getting old, love is also connected with erotic ecstasies. And uh, this is something uh, I wasn't expecting. And this is something that Corona now sort of stopped. So how playful can I be about that? It's really, it goes to the essence of my being. And yeah, and to, to be aware of it and to accept it. And for me, love needs continuity as well. So this is why I asked how a long distance relationship might function because you need for intimacy you need the closeness of the other person it may be bodily intimacy but it could also be your soul and your emotions um, i can't be playful i'm sorry it gets out it's just you don't very have serious to, right? it's, it's very it. serious to me <laughs> really serious yeah sorry okay <laughs> i pass on to haneli For me, love is, you, you, said, you said a word now, Monia, that truly resonates with my whole being, essence. And it's a feeling. It's something that, so you spoke about bubbling up earlier, God. it's bubbling something, bubbling up. and expresses itself in so many different ways. So for me, it's not just one thing. It's with different people, different, and it comes back to intimacy as well. And not only um, physical intimacy, but a deep connection with somebody else. Um, and then how we, and with some it can be very serious and with others very playful um, and very focused and others just simply as it is. Um, but for me, it is about being able to open myself up to others so that they can open themselves up to, uh, to me in return. So for me, it's something that it work, you know, it works in a flow. Um, it's something that I feel in my body because I'm sensory. So I'm just getting the feeling and I'm getting it often with very beautiful ladies. This just feeling of connection with you 
And for me, that's love as well. Um, it doesn't need a definition. It's, a, um, it's just here in the moment. Um, so I don't like to define it necessarily. I rather want to experience it. I have many pieces somehow, uh, a little bit like you said, Anneli. Um, so um, more like pre uh, memory pieces, like in a seminar many years ago, I had this love is not just a feeling, it's I can physically feel it. I know it's there. <laughs> so it's like, don't tell me it's an illusion because I know, I know it, to the bones, to my cells, that it exists. That was one. Another one in another context is love is a conversation, not just a feeling. So if you only feel it to your, for yourself, inside it's it's like this uh, guy <laughs> this guy who wife is complaining you um, you never say you loved me i said i i told you at our wedding and if it's not anymore you you know from my divorce lawyer so this it has to be outspoken it not only in this phrase, but somehow it has to be expressed in a way that is the other one understands. Yeah, and I want to share one experience I had in in the in a hot tub. <laughs> so it was really like being there in kind of a meditating state. And then I knew <laughs> in my cells that nothing in me has anything against any cell of my husband. So it, it was like, I didn't know where that knowing came from. So this was really profound and, and for me it made, a shift because before we only had fights and well, it was not so easy. But but there was something that that changed with it. And sometimes I can relate to it. So it was not every day I, I feel that. Uh, it was kind of a very intense feeling. But yeah, I can resonate with it and even if it's not so nice at the moment. Yeah. I'm going back to what Heidi had uh, said about learning to love. Um, so if it's a conversation, I think we usually have that conversation outside of ourselves. Um, but I think it is hard to learn to love uh, because it, the foundation starts with being able to love ourselves and accept ourselves. And then it's easier, I think, to accept other people. And I do think that's a learning process because as children, we get a lot of messages about what we're supposed to be doing and how to be because we're being raised uh, to be uh, human beings. So learning to love ourselves is something that I think is a lifelong, uh, lifelong journey. 
and you can't get better with time. Um, but I think it is a conversation that we have with ourselves and then we're able to have that conversation more, more readily, more easily uh, with other people. So, um, I mean, even your example of the hot tub, it's kind of like you, you first experienced that within and once you had that inner experience, you could uh, manifest it more outwardly. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> I just have an insight that it's just something that comes up as I'm sitting here with you and I had a question in my mind when this came up was why is it so difficult for us to talk about love um, we can easily talk about fear for example and then it was but love is what keeps us together it's like the connecting tissue between everything that is uh, in some sense no matter how we experience it um, and is it then perhaps it's all for me it's all all encompassing all of it all of its expressions and I totally resonate with Gertrude where you said we need to express it needs to be expressed, but it's us expressing it. It's not about the other, it's about self, and like you say, Christine, self, self first and then the other. So having, just sensing into that, what is it that I feel at this moment, sitting here with you beautiful ladies. And before this, I really had head cold. And in this space that we are together now, I feel much better. Mm -hmm. uh, love is working <laughs> its expression is definitely working in me physically as well and being able to share deeply with you and every single part of it whatever it might be and there's no judgment to it so for me love is not judging anything and comparing it it's, it's just what it is It, it, it's almost like a flower opening up, the blossoming of ourselves. And my, my own mother didn't know how to show love, affection, physically. She had to learn. We taught, we taught her because of her own background. And it was very precious to see, to, know, to witness that in her, that she was opening up and begin to love herself. And I will always treasure that about her when she's no longer with us. That we were able to, as children to witness it in a parent blossoming. So what was it then in us? I think it's in all of us. It just needs to be ignited in whatever way and be felt and experienced and expressed. Thank you. I'm complete. I'm just wondering, can love end? What do you say, Gertrude? Is there an no, end to love? I'm not the expert here. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that it ends ever, ever, ever. So it just continues in different manifestations. And yeah, but I don't think, as you said, uh, that's a Beatles song, uh, love keeps us together. <laughs> that's a Beatles song. So they really sang a lot about essential things. I was uh, continuing or adding something to what Han said. 
Um, we also need to allow it, allow love. Because this is often, I found myself not being able to express it in a direct way, but in an indirect way, like teasing the other people or, or you know, something, uh, you know, <laughs> because it felt to maybe not allow it or unusual to, to or, or kitsch, you know, uh, to, to, to express love in this like you see it in the movies so I often did it in the other way and afterwards then I also regret it because I know that it is sort of trans how do you say it can be misunderstood let's say this way and uh, maybe it's not but it's it's like not opening a wolf which is there but taking a, a detour somehow you know When Hanali was speaking, and now you say, um, I was thinking it's exchange. It's being able to give and to receive. And if you're only on one side, it's kind of trying out, or I don't know. It's, so, the receiving part is <laughs> is not so easy either than to to give it given it out and and monia when you when you asked that question it was um like maybe some forms stop some expression of love they dry out they stop and then, and actually, I don't know, it's, it, it's as if that is a force that is ongoing, no matter what we do and what do you think about it. And <laughs> I don't know, you know, if you think it's there or... I would like to make a little distinction here because I thought often in my life I had I was serious normally serial monogamous let's say and so I was together with several men and I always thought I would love them but this love didn't go on what might go on underneath is the building up of the capacity to love but not the love towards a special person, to a mm. particular person. I don't think so. I mean, Mark was my last one, and I do feel that I had a different level of love with him, and that it's still there somehow. I don't know how, but there is. And I also sort of feel <laughs> uh, his presence a little bit like with the plants, you know. <laughs> I might still... I talk with him but I have the feeling that the presence is still there so this sort of love maybe is continuous but I definitely say the specific love in the past for certain people has passed and not only for men also deep uh, connection with women and then for some reason uh, that uh, relationship um, faded away or was interrupted and this love went away and so my question is is that love if it can fade away? Or what love do we talk about? Loving memories. I mean, I guess if you, when relationships end, do we still remember that person fondly um, with some sense that there was once love that existed in that space or uh, do we leave and kind of shut a door um, and the love can't be recalled? Um, I think it's there if we stop and try to bring it forth, but it's not necessarily automatic. It's not necessarily an easy thing, especially if a relationship ended uh, with tension. 
it would be harder. I think in, in my own mind, it's harder uh, to think of people fondly if there was some ending that was maybe abrupt or unexpected or not desired. Um, but the love that once existed is still sometimes uh, a memory if I wanna, if I wanna bring it forth. And I want to say um, what I'm loving during this conversation is uh, Hannah Lee's references to her body and the way she is so in tune with that and that she uh, pays attention and references it. And I find that um, really helpful and inspiring. And I love that. As she was speaking about the memories, Christine. Thank you for that recognition. Appreciate that. But when you were speaking about the memories and even Heidi, you speaking about your experience with certain people. Is it our perception of that relationship that changes? Is it love itself that stops or is it just our perception of it? How we perceive it to be because it, it's not, it doesn't feel the same anymore. So I just have that question. Maybe it's our perception of it that changes. But I also feel it's, it's always there, regardless of that, of that um, perception. Love for me is the binding force of the universe. Um, and we experience all these different configurations of it and expressions of it, but it's always be there it's just our relationship to it so our relation to it perhaps just a question i have maybe it's a, the relation that's changing to it but not love itself i don't know well can you that, talk that, about that, oh excuse me Go that's a, a good point Hanali. um but I, isn't it the greeks who have many words for love so you know there's a there's a soulful love that kind of binds the universe and and that probably never goes anywhere it's always there and you know when we talk about the relation the love between two people uh that's harder to know if it uh remains we don't have a lot of words for those different levels of love to how to express them yeah flavors <laughs> yeah uh, Hanali, you talked about the perception of love and to me immediately popped up the word deception and uh, how we are brought up uh, we might when the love ends strangely you know we think oh it was all a deception it was not love it was you know and then it can also uh, change into hate or into you know, something uh, not very pleasant and at least for a while. And um, yeah, is this the human love? Uh, uh, and then we have the universal love with, with which Christine, uh, of which Christine talked and are they different things? Are they more or less, you know, uh, parts of it, but not the whole thing? Deception or illusion? Heidi. For me, it's deception because uh, uh, I was educated to to think that what I perceive is is wrong, and so I'm this. Uh, I'm this. How do you say? It's not an illusion that we didn't have this word. It was a deception that I feel that because mm -hmm. the authority said that's not true. What I see and what I feel, you know. So it is a, for me. It's a deception. I know that you say illusion because of your Buddhist background, but it didn't exist in my, in my, uh, <laughs> in my perception. <laughs> well, for me to, to deceive somebody, there is a purpose in it. But if you perceive something and it's not as it is, maybe that's an illusion to me and not a deception. 
Okay, it was in what how I used the word deception is self deception. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was just thinking, Christine, um, agape, the, the love that, that bows down and lifts up, <laughs> and eros, the other, the, the other force. And yeah, I think we don't distinguish that well about what love is and we have some some uh, models in our culture that say mm -hmm. this how it should look like or so so yeah not to to fool ourselves what what is it do i go along with a specific view of how it should be or do I really connect with that universal force that connects everything I don't know for myself I had some interesting experiences with people that I was not supposed to have such a such a love for according to society's rules and what you just said, Gertrude. And the most beautiful things were born out of those relationships. Uh, crow creation, specifically. So I wrote an article many years ago about uncommon bonds because it was one, once we just let these perceptive things go and allow whatever to un wants to unfold to unfold, it's not about deception or deceiving a partner or anything like that above board but it is allowing that whatever that connection to unfold and to co-create something with that connection it has always been fascinating for me because these people um if i look back at what we co-create it was the most beautiful things so there was purpose in it and there was nobody harmed through it um, And I, I was just wondering what is, when you were all speaking now, what was, what is the first, what's our first experience of love as a baby? How would we, how did we perceive it? <laughs> and I was just wondering about that. And I don't know if you're aware of, um, of uh, birthing into being. It was a German lady who started more than 30 years ago of women giving birth while they're in ecstasy. And the lives of those children are completely different from how we were born. <laughs> and uh, I, that imprint on the limbic brain, and she does a lot of work with the limbic brain injuries because of our births, for whatever reasons. But it's just amazing. I just saw the video. A friend showed me the video here in South Africa of her work. And I was rebirthing myself again just watching that video. And it had an incredible impact on me. And they do, they do therapeutical work with, on the limbic brain with it. Um, people What's their name? I'll have to come back to you with the name, but I'll give it to you, all you ladies. It's just incredible work. And she was a nurse, um, midwife. And then she started this, it's more than 30 years now. I think it's 35 years. And she's got different people trained all over the world to help. Um, she works with the pair, they work with the pair, both parents, the, the dad and the mom, um, and guiding them before the baby comes and then in this process of really giving birth in ecstasy. It's just incredible to watch. <laughs> it was like that for me was just pure love because it, coming to the world like that was you feeling welcome. Um, and I could feel in myself sensory wise that something happened to me just watching the video. 
but I'll send you the link to all of you. I'll go and find it. Oops. Uh, I just, we mentioned Agape and Eros. This one. And I was just reflecting now if you have no choice, Eros chooses you. That's, uh, but Agape you can develop, I feel. And that's one of the, maybe one of the tasks of our lives. Maybe you have different experiences with Eros, but that was my experience. I had no choice. I was just, <laughs> me too, by Eros. <laughs> I, I was thinking of my youngest daughter. I, uh, so the others were born in hospital and the youngest I got at home. I welcomed at home. And this was really, I was upright and, and, and then she was really a few minutes later in a little bath and she's really unfolding like a, like a flower. And and I can see this this um, this this genuine trust in her. So this so she has a like in 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 Qigong she has this. <laughs> that was the way she learned to to walk first going into his natural Qigong basic posture, and then from there. And, and walking beautifully, so not stumbling and then trying to, to get it done. So, and, and she is like that. She's, she's like a butterfly. I mean, like something is, is working in her and then the beauty comes out. So it, so it resonates, not ecstasy, <laughs> but, uh, but, but it was really so different. The, my experience and me experiencing her as a human being. So if, when she was mad, she was in this, you know, like all the strength and she was shouting and uh, what do you say, uh, with her feet and, and then it was gone. Like, yeah, so. So this, this self-relatedness, self-love, and from there, this inner strength and from there going into the world doesn't mean that she, that she doesn't have any troubles with anything, but it's different, yeah. And what Christina said, this, this developing my self-love for my, and, and being, then being of service. So one of my meditation teachers said, everybody gets love wrong. <laughs> first, it's like you have this, this bowl inside and first you just bring it in here and then it overflows. But if you just give and give and give and then it's empty and... It's interesting. It's a very different talk and atmosphere than last time. Talking about fear is no problem. <laughs> yeah. Can I share something, Monya, about last time? I think it was last time all the time before. But something you said, you, you chose that day to feel you're not going to allow somebody else to another person to impact how you're feeling about the day. But when you were expressing that truth, I felt love just everywhere. It was so, such a beautiful moment because you blossomed as well. But in that moment, as you were expressing your truth, whatever it was, it was the most beautiful thing to witness. And that for me was love. And then when we speak our truth in such a beautiful way and presence it, 
So I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you for mentioning it. I would like us to sense into our connection here and, and really get who we are and how we are related and how love plays here. <laughs> And uh, since we're at the top of the hour, um, sensing into this and have a closing round with the double question, what do I want to appreciate, uh, what do I want to acknowledge for myself, in myself, and what do I want to appreciate about one or two or so the others or yourself but first the self-acknowledgement let's just sense a little bit into who we are and our connection I start. Uh, I want to acknowledge about myself that I'm finally able to speak my truth and not be ashamed about it or anxious or, yeah. That's what I want to acknowledge about myself. And do you want to appreciate somebody else or yourself um, for a quality that you see in her? Oh, I appreciate everybody differently. I appreciate Hani's joyfulness and her connection to her body <laughs> and Heidi's seriousness sometimes and her yeah her loss and her brave carrying on and i appreciate your eagerness Gertrude, to spread what you found important for yourself. And I appreciate Christine's different cultural background and still blending in with us Europeans and South Africans, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate of all of us our co-creative energy, our willingness to co-create. This is what I appreciate most of us. Thank you. I appreciate what's rising within me at the moment. And feeling connected to you all. And I appreciate, I have the sense that you're all part of me and me part of you. And I appreciate that in all of you, you're presenting something back to me, mirror. Each of you. And make me ask deeper questions about my life and myself and my journey here. Yeah? And it's truly a joy every week to be here with you. Whatever we explore together, the beingness together for me is more important than what we ever discuss. That sense of this combined energy and what we are co-creating. Thank you.
Um, what I'm appreciating right now is um, my ability to sense the beauty in this group, um, beautiful women, and the idea of beauty also um, being a form of love. I think uh, Hannah Lee, when she was talking to Monia about her expression in the last session, she used the word, it was beautiful. And it seemed when she used that word that uh, another word that she could have substituted was love. And I think seeing beauty is a, is a way of loving um, and appreciating beauty is a way of loving. Um, and in this group, I think we do a really good job of, of recognizing that in each other, the beauty um, and also the truth that everybody speaks about themselves um, is also there. So what I experienced and what I'm happy about it or appreciate about myself is that for me it's okay that I don't need to lead, you know. You can be somebody and it's wonderful. And I I can be a participant and or a leader and feel the connection at the same time. And what else I appreciate, there was a moment when I really had the feeling that my heart opened. So you girls, you made it happen. <laughs> when we talked at the, it was more or less at the end. Uh, there was a really, I felt a big warmth in my, in my, yeah, is it my chest? I, I think it's the whole body, but it's not the warmth of Italian summer. It's a different feeling. <laughs> 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 and what I really appreciate that you come and talk with me and in, in, in the in the group because it's hard that ever you find people who are willing to talk in this way without expressing opinions and fighting against each other which is the normal thing you know and that we can unfold a conversation and being in the place of not knowing at the beginning Beginning because we don't know if something valuable comes out or not. Normally it does, but you know, allowing us the creativity to arise. And uh, Gertraud, this system, uh, what you said you learned it in a, a workshop. It, it's quite good. How, how is it called? Wish flow. Wish flow. We flow. We flow, okay. It's the yeah, word we, we and the word flow and a dash in between. Together, yeah. And we are flowing together. And I really like that, that there's a certain structure in it. And so uh, it's not only, you know, a free conversation can end up in chaos sometimes or, you know, uh, something. Or some people don't come to speak, don't uh, get to speak. But so there is a... I like it. And if you want to do it more often, I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, girls, I really am happy that you are here co-creating. Thank you. Yeah, what I appreciate myself for is uh, just jumping in and, and doing it. And it, it really lit up my heart. So I really feel this work connected to love and to connectedness. So, so it, it was resonating so much. So I, and, and also for, at the beginning, I was a little bit like in my role, but then I could back up more and more and just be part. And, and that, that was really good. It was like, now <laughs> it's, it's a close, um, yeah, the round is, is uh, one. And um, I appreciate Christine for you have a, a what comes across is this delicate, subtle way of being and your humbleness and um, it's like this so 
and it it has a beauty in it that that I really really like. And Hanali, you are like connected without saying a word. It, I I really feel like oh everybody can just grasp her and, <laughs> and hug her. <laughs> Yeah, you you're so present, so joyfully present. It's it's, and with all your cells, with your whole being, with your whole body, and and this is always a joy <laughs> to have you in a conversation. And uh, I, I I'm really um, it's a shame that I couldn't come to all your offerings <laughs> because I really liked when I could. Uh, Monia, thinking, thank you very much, and I really appreciate your truthfulness and your um, your questions, your way of not giving opinions, but but really deep questions that, <laughs> that you can ponder on for for days, and we try to fill it all in, and uh, it gives me. Yeah, food for thought, and thank you. And it goes on after the conversations. And Heidi, I mean, you're the soul of it. You're the, the your space holding really covers the, the, the globe somehow. And, and uh, it's a loving space, it's a great space, and I, I'm very happy to be part of it since three years or so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So thank you very much, everybody. Also for letting me, uh, yeah. yeah, kind of facilitate that. They say steward, <laughs> not to, to take the normal names. Yeah. So thank you. We see you in two weeks. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, everybody. <laughs> Bye. -bye.